Okay, so let's go, Andreas. Um, thanks everyone for joining. Thank you for joining us on that uh, on this webinar uh, with uh, our friends OVH Cloud. The goal is to show you how together we can bring you a sovereign multi-cloud solution that is helping you to get a uh, also a zero locking uh, with a zero locking approach with a workload first approach. Um, so today we will be uh, seeing the, so we will be doing the welcoming introductions. We will be explaining a bit the state of multi-cloud and uh, where the where the business is going uh, from a multi-cloud perspective and why multi-cloud is important and what are the challenges that are uh, faced uh, when we want to have a multi-cloud architecture. Uh, then um, uh, Andreas uh, will be helping us to uh, explain the sovereign cloud infrastructure from OVH cloud perspective. Then we will be having a, a demo of our solution. And uh, we will be showing you that uh, zero locking is uh, really achievable. And then if you have any uh, Q&A. But first, uh, first thing to start with is to present ourselves. Andreas, you can go ahead. Um, hello, everybody, and a warm welcome also from my side. Um, yeah, I'm the sales director from OVH Cloud in Central Europe, uh, meaning Germany, Austria, Switzerland. And I'm so happy to be here with Virtuoso to talk about multi-cloud approach because I think it's more important than ever in today's economy. And I can promise you, you are going to be thrilled what Ahmed is going to show you, so. And myself, I am Ahmed Amni. I'm based in France at the OVH Cloud uh, uh, country. Uh, I am managing and uh, leading all the business development efforts and in business developments, all the alliances with, uh, with the hyperscalers. Because today, OVH Cloud, since the uh, 1st of October, is considered as a hyperscaler by IDC and God. Um, okay, good. So there are three, uh, or there are, like before we were seeing three types of clouds. There was the private cloud where we have everything on premise or everything hosted somewhere, but we have one private cloud that we're doing or managing where we put all our workloads. There is public cloud as well, where we are using the cloud, man, a managed cloud uh, by a hyperscaler where we have our infrastructure and then all our platform. And then we go there and deploy applications in like, Last 10 years, we are hearing more and more about uh, hybrid cloud where we have like some piece private, some piece public. And today, the trend today, since uh, since two years now and more and more, especially in 2023 and 2024 and moving forward, we are in multi-cloud or multi-cloud uh, 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 architectures, meaning that it's not using two places, it's using many clouds. Uh, we can use the clouds based on our needs uh, we need an application here, we need a service here, we need a database here, we need a latency. From a latency perspective, we need infrastructure everywhere, and we are taken to use a multi-cloud or adopt a multi-cloud approach for our customers. So we see system integrators and managed service providers more into uh, creating relationships with all the cloud providers and then building their multi-cloud or multi-cloud uh, architectures. Um, so according to Flexera, 87% of all the enterprises out there are using a multi-cloud approach. So it's not, uh, it's not, it's not something new. Uh, now we are seeing it more and more used. Uh, uh, and uh, we are like 80, 80, 87% of, uh, of the cloud user. Uh, so what is uh, multi-cloud as a definition? Multi-cloud is not an aggregation of services from different cloud vendors. It's not like I have a, a software, a Power BI running on Microsoft Azure, an application running on OVH Cloud that I am in a, in a multi-cloud multi -cloud world. Being in the multi-cloud is to have the possibility of interoperability between the, the, the clouds. It's having the possibility of this application can, in this cloud can speak to another database and another cloud, and then having the possibility as well to manage my multi-cloud uh, environments. And then by then I am like the master of that, uh, of uh, my environment. And it's not like created into silos of applications where nothing speaks about with, uh, with, uh, with none. Uh, and uh, so when, when we see the use of multi-cloud and the use of multi-cloud architectures, you will notice with me that the most, uh, the biggest users, like almost 50% of, uh, of the usage of the multi-cloud is from the application world and coming from the application. So usually developers, they go and develop applications on top of these clouds that need some services that are coming from, 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 from these clouds. So, and 
we find ourselves as a developer to have three platform as a services to manage, four platform services to, to manage, because I have an application running on OVH Cloud, I have another one running on Google Cloud, another one in Microsoft Azure, and I need to have a seamless way in order to, uh, to, uh, to make it uh, to make it. Then we find DR, uh, DR and failover between the clouds as a, as a thing. Uh, so the benefits of having a multi-cloud uh, uh, architecture, the first, one of the first benefits is the latency for your application. So sometimes your cloud provider cannot give you all the locations that you want, especially when you are a regional or a global SI, MSP, ISV, and you need to have a specific database or a specific workload running on top of, uh, on top of a country and you don't find that uh, that country, or you want to have it on premise, or you want to have it in a sovereign cloud, like what OVH Cloud will be providing you. So, so you 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 must, and you have from a data sovereignty perspective, have that data uh, and have those applications running on to, on top of these of these clouds. Um, so it gives you possibility, and it opens for you the world from geographic location and from technology capabilities, the services you would be using uh, with any cloud. Like all the clouds are have dif are having different services. You sometimes need some, so you have a, one cloud provider of a choice, but you cannot be trapped in, you cannot be locked in with the services of that cloud provider. So you can go and find other services in other clouds. You reduce the risks from vendor cloud vendor locking. It's important. We are hearing it more and more, more, and more from the market. Uh, the hyperscalers as well today are pushing for the, for the no vendor locking. And we are now uh, trying to find a way and present you a way with OVH Cloud on how we are doing it. So you have you have your vendor interoperability. You have one, uh, you need to have like one possibility to, to do and manage all your workloads, uh, by, but, but also not having that vendor cloud uh, locking. Now this uh, multi-cloud, when you want to be in a multi-cloud uh, 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 architecture or, or, or technology provider, you will face some challenges. One of the first challenges is an operational challenge from a management perspective. Imagine yourself running four clouds. You will need to have four people that are certified or four FTEs that are certified on these clouds. You will need to operate four platforms and services to create your applications and manage your applications. From a networking perspective, it won't be easy because you need to make sure that the networking of all the uh, clouds are like can be uh, uh, can be created in a way where interoperability is possible. Uh, the vendor relationship, you find yourself trapped by keeping one vendor and you cannot enjoy all the, all the benefits of the other vendor. So you find yourself uh, locked in with an AWS or a Microsoft Azure while you have alternative cloud providers like OVH Cloud uh, that can propose you a lot of good services but because you have a commitment with one of the hyperscalers, you cannot go there and you try to find a way with your hyperscaler. So you have that vendor lock-in that is taking you. Integration, as I said, between the clouds, if you want to integrate like only networking, it's not uh, easy. You will need to have a third party solution that gives you possibility to make that uh, networking, uh, networking uh, uh, integration and employee skills. We know it, we face it, finding cloud skills in the market, super expensive, rare to find, uh, it needs a lot of certifications. Uh, and uh, you, it's, it's a barrier for you to go and embrace uh, a multi-cloud uh, uh, architecture. Now, uh, a brief presentation about Virtuoso. Um, so we are 22 years plus in the market, soon, soon to be a 23 years uh, uh, old uh, company. We have offices globally, uh, we operate globally, uh, and we are coming from the service provider market. So we understand very, very well the service provider market, and we are shifting as well to become a, a cloud provider, but as well for the SIs and MSPs that are serving the enterprise. Um, so we know very well the service provider business. Service providers rely on our technologies to build their own public clouds or their own uh, private clouds. But as well now, what we are doing is that we are helping the enterprise market to embrace uh, cloud freedom and make cloud freedom uh, easy. Um, so what is our multi-cloud application platform or what is our multi-cloud uh, application uh, approach? We are not approaching it from an infrastructure perspective. So we don't do multi-cloud 
from an infrastructure perspective. There are many other ISVs that are doing it, that are our friends that can help you to do it from an infrastructure perspective. What we do from our side is that we make an abstraction of the infrastructure layer so that we give you a platform as a service or there is a platform as a service ready to use to deploy any kind of applications from Java applications to Kubernetes and any like legacy applications or cloud native applications deployable on top of any cloud. So your infrastructure manager uh, will be managing the infrastructure. The only, they only need to attach it to the platform as a service as an availability zone. And once it's attached to the availability zone, the platform as a service, our solution, our multi-cloud solution can help to deploy any application, migrate any application from any cloud to any cloud. And I will be having a demo uh, about it later. So we are a multi-cloud application orchestrator. We are not a multi-cloud infrastructure orchestrator. And we do it from the application layer and we bring all the DevOps capabilities and all the platform as a service uh, capabilities to all these applications. For example, auto scale, for example, uh, uh, migration of the workload of the uh, containers from, from one cloud to the other one. For example, the uh, uh, elasticity of these containers. If these applications need to have more, uh, more or scalability, we, we can do auto scalable environments and make the applications consuming what they need to have. So for you as well, from a cost management perspective, you can, you can embrace it and you can, you can manage the cost of, uh, of your cloud. And then by having this uh, platform as a service that is infrastructure agnostic, you can run it on your data center, you can run it on OVH cloud. And then from there, you can have and attach all your clouds and enjoy the cloud freedom for your application. Uh, and this will help you to uh, do platform as a service and do a series of uh, uh, of uh, solutions that you can uh, that you can embrace and you can propose uh, to your customers. If you are an MSP or an SI, uh, if you are an end user, you can use uh, the platform as a service for your own development, and you can do test and dev. You can do a test and dev and scaling and production. It's all the stage that it comes with uh, with uh, with uh, DevOps capabilities. Our motto is anything as a service. The goal here is to bring anything as, as a service with cloud freedom. Uh, so you can deploy whatever you want, wherever you want, on top of the cloud if you want. And then if you're not happy with that cloud, you can change uh, from, a, from, a cloud, uh, from a cloud provider to another cloud provider. Uh, some of the, so as I, as I was saying, so we have a live migration capability. So you, as you can see here, we are migrating and I will be making it as a demo. We are migrating a mine, Minecraft uh, uh, application from AWS uh, to OVH Cloud uh, with one click. It's like uh, it's that easy. We are moving one application from uh, AWS to OVH Cloud with one click, and I would be showing you this in a, in a few. Now I hand it to you, Andreas, to present OVH Cloud uh, and all the benefits of uh, of the sovereign cloud uh, that you have proposed. Yeah, thank you. So it feels a little bit that after me, it's a uh, free lunch because after that, we see your demo. So I will keep it very short and brief. And because some people, even though it's nearly um, not imaginable, but some of you might uh, don't know OVH Cloud. So who are we? Well, I try to put it into a sentence and I say, it says, we are the only European hyperscaler who builds an open, reversible, sustainable, and transparent global cloud with the best price performance ratio. So honestly, I could stop after this sentence because it's what I believe is all the advantages we can offer you are built in into that one sentence. I will have some slides to prove what I say. I will prove why we are a European uh, hyperscaler. Um, I will tell you what we understand under sustainable cloud um, and why we think it, and we'll talk a little bit about our best price performance ratio. And, but, but why do I say we are reversible? And well, our open source platform is completely built on OpenStack. So OpenStack is really the native OpenStack you, you have in the actual version. So that enables you to move between the clouds if you're not using the tools, but if you're thinking about, well, which data should sit on which cloud and how do I want to use it and um, easily move in and out um, with virtuoso, of course, or um, without virtuoso. 
So on the right, you see some, some facts about it. Uh, we are also operating since over 20 years in the business. Currently, we have uh, 37 data centers in 13 different uh, locations. We are about 3,000 employees right now. And um, we have currently approximately 400,000 servers running in our data centers. Um, we are serving approximately 1.5 million customers in over 140 countries. And um, you see the PUE, and we come a little bit um, to that in a later slate. So we think we are really a significant player and that not only we think we are a European hyperscaler, but also, for example, IDC, you can see on the next slide, if you move to that. Yeah. And yes, there you see it is the um, latest slide from um, IDS uh, regarding public cloud um, players and the Europe. And of course, you see on the top right, there are the big three players like AWS, Google, or uh, Azure, of course. But in the segment below from the major players, you see only Chinese or American players. And if you want to have a European player that plays in that area and can offer you as much um, services maybe not in the best detailed as the big American hyperscalers, but close to it. And um, then I believe OV8 Cloud is really the number one, and that is a clear differentiation to local players or to the American hyperscalers. Um, if you go to the next slide, it takes a while. So um, what is really unique for us. The first one is, of course, the regulation. We are totally independent from the US Cloud Act and because um, we're European based. We have now um, strings attached to the American market. Yes, we have a subsidiary there, but it's simply buying uh, the technology we have from um, OVH Cloud Europe and um, is deploying it there and there's no um, other strings attached. Um, we have a very, very clear commitment that we will never use your customer data. We don't use it for our AI models and we don't need use it for anything. It's totally your data and will remind your data. Um, you can choose the data center of your location and the data will, of course, stay there. Um, as we have the most data center in Europe, of course, um, they will stay in Europe anyway. But if you want to go to Asia, or to the Americas, and you also have the opportunity. And we offer the highest standards for data protection, um, which you can see on the right side with the um, different European standards that we fulfill. And that puts us, I think, in a really good position to um, provide you with the services, even for critical data that you will um, use and that you have and that you want to take care of, of course. So in the next slide, I talked about sustainability. And if you take a look at the figures, so we have a PUE, that means power usage efficiency between 1.1 and 1.3. And that is quite unique in the market because it's really the complete power usage we're measuring here from the um, data center itself, because we're owning our own data center from the service, the consumption and the operation of the service. So this is a really, really great um, value, which is becoming more and more important. The same goes with um, the water and the carbon efficiency that we can measure to carbon efficiency. And we have just built a new tool, but I will go on the next slide into it. So we're really trying to, to be a sustainable cloud where you can go to with a good conscience and um, that we believe um, a data center is really uh, lowering the energy consumption compared if you all do it on your own um, premises instead of increasing the consumption. 
So in the next slide, it's what I said, we have just published a carbon calculator. You can see it in your manager if you have it uh, um, already using some services. And what you have there is that we have um, for all our service and for the two universes, we currently um, two of our three universes, we have the bare metal products and we have the hosted private cloud, which is our managed uh, hosted managed cloud, I prefer to say. And it's coming for the public cloud, but it's taking more time and you get for all three scopes, so manufacturing, electricity, operations, and for all location worldwide, except of the US, because we don't have any access to that, as I said before. Um, and uh, you get all the data you want to see and really can, can see the carbon footprint um, you are producing through the usage of our services. You can see it, as I said, through the manager or the API and you get a monthly report if you want to. So I think this is really what we say, we are transparent and we are really sustainable. So you can see anything um, about yeah, our, our four figures. And if you go to the next slide, well, one reason to, to try OVH Cloud, and it's not the worst one I have to say, is that our pricing is really fantastic. Um, we believe we really offer the best price performance ratio in the market. Um, we can do this because we have integrated a whole um, value chain. That means we are manufacturing our own service. We bring them into our own data centers and we operate them by bringing water cooling to the processor so we don't need huge ventilation and stuff like this because water is much more efficient um, in lowering um, the heat than of course uh, the air is doing it and uh, what we also offer you is a really predictable pricing because it's not depending on the customer uh, of any commitments of you and it's really easy to see you also have no lock-in effects as, for example, for most of our storage products and for any other product, there's no incoming or outgoing traffic charge that we're going to bring to you. It's all included in the pricing, so no bad surprises when the weekly or monthly bill is coming. And um, this is what we really say when we are transparent we have really no hidden costs and you can clearly see on our website the prices you have and that you get and so you can really be uh, relaxed and knowing what bill will come next month so yes i think that's it from my side ahmed if you go next slide so now the magic starts let me yes. say more of the solution because this is what will be what will be much in the reality with what I was speaking about. Um, okay, so let me share my screen. Uh, so yeah, so I'm I'm not very technical, but uh, it's even for, simple for for someone who is not technical like uh, like. So I will be starting with the user experience, and I will be showing the user experience on how it's easy to use our platform to embrace a multi-cloud uh, uh, topology. And I will be focusing here on four use cases. The first use case is multi-cloud or multi-cloud application orchestration and uh, showing how we can orchestrate all our applications from one place and from one platform. The second use case is multi uh, or multi-database or multi-cloud database uh, from for a latency perspective and how we can deploy the same database on top of many cloud providers and make sure that this uh, database is uh, is available and uh, available also for from a DR perspective in case I lose, I lose one, I have two others that are still running and I can redirect my traffic to there. The third use case that we see uh, very happening is the migration of legacy applications to the cloud or any application that is using a non a cloud native uh, application server or database and how easy it is to to take them to the cloud and the fourth one is how we can uh, get into that uh, development cycle from a devops perspective so this is the user dashboard and this is like the developers this is what the, the development panel so where the developers are coming to start and spin their environments in order to start developing their applications i can click easily on a new environment and i can choose as you can see here I have all the programming languages of 2023. So it goes from Java to Python 
I can even bring a custom language if I have a custom, custom language that I would like to take in a container. In this case, I will be taking a Java application. I can choose to have a load balancer or not. I can choose to have my, the application server that I would like to, uh, to have. I can choose to have a, a cache or not, uh, SQL databases, uh, uh, MySQL, or non-SQL database. So I can have MongoDB or any, uh, uh, any other. I can choose the elasticity or the scalability of my container, of my application. So I can say my application will be using uh, 100 and, or 201 one gigabit of RAM, but if I have some load, I, it can go to 4.5 gigabit, right? I can, when it comes to databases, I can do auto clustering. So we have, we are coming, it's not only deploying a database, it's deploying a database and making all the technicalities and from an architecture perspective to these databases. So I can choose a primary, secondary, Calera or primary, uh, primary, primary type of databases. And then I can choose the cloud provider I want to, to deploy my application on. So, uh, and this is, uh, so as I told you, like we are not doing it from an infrastructure perspective, you will still need to create that VM on top of that cloud. But once it is attached to the, to the platform, it opens for you the unlimited uh, uh, possibility. So here I would de be deploying my, uh, my uh, application and my container on top of OVH cloud. I click on create and it start generating for me my, my, my environment to start like developing. So in two minutes from now, I would be having the possibility to deploy my application and I'm bringing here a multi-cloud application management. I have a, a Kubernetes cluster running on GCP. I have an application from IBM that is running on GCP and I have my environment now starting in OVH cloud. Now let's imagine that I am not happy anymore with the cloud provider. And I want to, I have this Kubernetes cluster running on JCP, but I want to move it to OVH cloud. I just need to click on the settings. I have a button migration. I select the region. I select OVH cloud here in Paris. I can do live migration. So I can do online or offline migration. All I need is to click on verify and migrate. And it starts moving my Kubernetes cluster. So it's as easy as it sounds. So it's a, Clicking, one-click migration, you do it offline or online. To do it online, of course, uh, when you want to have live migration, some, uh, some uh, criteria should be met. But it's, uh, it's uh, like only from a CPU model uh, perspective. Now, this is the first use case. So the first use case is to have one single place to manage all my applications. And I have applications on OVH, I have others in JCP, I have others in Amazon, and I can have them all from one single platform. Now, the second use case that I would like to show you is from a database perspective. So let's imagine I am a developer and I am a developer in a bank or in, a, in an SME who is having uh, 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 customers that are in or end customers that are in different places in Europe, for example. I have customers in Germany, I have customers in France and customers in, in, in Spain. I can come to the marketplace and here we have a series of applications, third-party applications that you can use that are maintained by us. So these templates are maintained by us. As you can see here, Microsoft SQL 2019, MariaDB, Kubernetes. And I can choose to, 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 to run a, a MySQL database, but a multi-region MySQL database. So in here, I have the possibility to deploy the same database on three cloud on three different cloud providers. And then I have, for example, AWS for the, uh, Spain, then JCP for uh, France and, or, or, or OVH for France and JCP for, for Germany, for example. Or I can have three data centers of OVH. I can have OVH France, OVH, uh, OVH uh, Spain and OVH Germany. And then by clicking on install, the system will automatically create for me the same database and thus the, the replication between the databases. So any data that would be written in the database of Spain would be automatically replicated in the one in France and in the one in Germany. That means that if I have something happening on that data center in, in Spain or something happening with that data, the database, I just need to reroute the traffic to one of these two, France or Germany, or balance the traffic between both of them in order to have a DR for my database, for my database. And then I embrace a multi-cloud uh, topology. Now, 
So this is the second use case. So first use case, I am migrating my application. I am migrating my Kubernetes cluster now from GCP to OVH Cloud. I am uh, installing my multi-cloud uh, databases between three different cloud providers. And I am creating an environment that my developer will be starting using uh, in order to develop his application. Now, let's imagine I have legacy applications and the effort that are running in my data center that are uh, consuming resources because a legacy application should be, have, should be having a match with the type of CPU and usually it's old CPUs. So I need always to go and find old hardware, refurbished hardware to maintain them in my, in my data center because I don't have the capacity from a development perspective to re-architecture my application or to refactor my application so that the, uh, that applications uh, become a uh, cloud native application. So what I would be doing here, I can, for example, let's imagine it's Java application running on Tomcat 6, which has been going end of life in 2017. I have templates here and I can choose the template of Tomcat 6. So I will be creating a container with a Tomcat 6 and then I would be choosing the, the uh, uh, scalability that I would like to have. I would be deploying it on OVH Cloud, and I just need to create uh, to click on create. And once cre creating on 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 uh, one, once uh, once uh, once clicking on create, my platform as a service now is deploying for me a container with that specific application server that is uh, now under creation. And all I need afterwards, and uh, like we will we will see it if. I guess we have time. Uh, so once I have it, uh, when, once I have it created, all I need to do is to push the same code that I have in my application of today. The application that I'm running in my data center, I can uh, take the same code and I don't need to do any code change. I just need to change any dependencies from network perspective, because like you are moving from a data center to another one. Uh, but this is the only change that you need to do. From a code perspective, there is zero code change. So we are easing for all the ecosystem out there the possibility to migrate from a uh, from a legacy application to a legacy application from uh, on premise to the cloud. And then once you have it on the cloud, running on a performance cloud, you can work and you can have tools to uh, uh, modify them to cloud native. For example, we have a partnership with IBM, and they have this application called the Mono to Micro that is transforming an application from a monolith application to a microservices application. And then once you use that service and you push your code, you can have your microservices and port it again to our platform as a service, and then you can enjoy all the cloud freedom that you have. So you can do this change in two steps rather than having it in your data center with hardware that is consuming a lot of energy that is not supported anymore with uh, all that stuff. Uh, now, I have my environment now running with Tomcat 6. I just kind of need to come to the de deployment manager. I have here, I will be using the hello world zip. Uh, here I can have a git, uh, a git, uh, a git um, folder. So I will say, okay, deploy for me this code into this application server. Uh, and then it will deploy. It will uh, go there and it will be deploying my code and I will be clicking on it so, so, so you can see that the code has been deployed on that uh, depreciated or uh, uh, old, uh, or non-cloud native applications. So. Uh, now, meanwhile, it is it is it is uh, it is going. As you can see, I have all the uh, some uh, DevOps capabilities. So I have uh, the possibility to do uh, add-ons. I can encrypt from a SSL perspective. I can do all the file uh, file synchronization. I can do time zone change. I can start or stop the environment at some points to uh, reduce the uh, cloud con uh, consumption. Uh, I can do backups as well. I can uh, um, restart the nodes. I can configure uh, my code and everything. I can check all the logs of my uh, of my application server. I can have the statistics from a monitoring perspective: how much it consumes, uh, how much this container is consuming from a uh, uh, from um, from a uh, resources perspective. I can do web SSH. I can redeploy the container if I wish to redeploy the container, and I have SFTP as well. Uh, now, if I click here and I open it on a browser, you will see that my Hello World has been deployed on the Tomcat 6. So I have now an application that is running on Tomcat 6, a legacy application running on OVH Cloud, and I did it in five minutes.
And this today takes like weeks because we need to refactor, re-architecture the application to make it cloud native and then take it to a public cloud in a cloud native. So I can do it in two steps. First, relieve myself from my data center or from my old hardware, take it to the cloud, and then from the cloud, I can use some tools that will be helping you to micro services the, 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 the application. Uh, now, so, so the four use case, so, and within, within the same, uh, within the same uh, uh, methodology, like uh, with showing you all the DevOps capabilities we have, and I cannot like take only 15 minutes to show you everything because we have a lots of full features in, uh, in, our, in our solution, but you can have the test and dev if you want to go on production, for example, on an OpenShift or on a, on a, on a Kubernetes, you can do the test, the test and development. And we have Kubernetes clusters here. So you can do your test and development and then create a Kubernetes cluster. And one of the things that we need to mention here is that our Kubernetes is highly available. It's a bring, it is coming with high availability, which is something that we, we don't find a lot out there in the market. And it's a, from the template perspective, it's like the temp template is coming, is coming from us and maintained by us, by Virtuoso. And uh, or you can like deploy if you want to deploy on an OpenShift or you want to deploy on a JKE, you can do all. And here we are speaking about high and big and uh, or large uh, enterprises. They can do two, two thirds of the process on our solution, meaning test and dev and staging can be done on our solution. Or it can be installed on OVH Cloud. Uh, it's infrastructure agnostic, as we said. And then you can push your code afterwards to any cloud uh, you would like to push uh, to push it. So this is, in a nutshell, the usage of our solution, how we can use our solution and how we are bringing cloud freedom to, uh, to the market. Everything is on containers, everything on uh, standards of uh, 20 to, uh, 2023 and onwards. Uh, we are not doing VMs. We, there is a possibility to create VMs in case you want to use a bare metal uh, as a hosting, as an availability zone. But like we are going with the mindset of containers and every single application is using a container. And uh, you can like this container can be uh, uh, can be scalable and uh, can be movable from any cloud to any cloud. Now, now the magic exists, so it's uh, it's not only like a slide. Uh, so so yeah, so multi cloud we with OVH cloud as you can imagine as uh, uh, OVH cloud coming with thirty seven uh, uh, data centers, hyperscale, uh, high availability cheaper cost from an from a, from a infrastructure as a service perspective. Good support as well. Uh, they, they, we are, we are a, an open trusted uh, a partner of OVH Cloud and OVH Cloud is one of our, our uh, biggest partners from, uh, from an infrastructure as a service perspective. We together are joining forces to propose to the market a full multi-cloud solution. So you can have it from the infrastructure layer with OVH and 37 uh, data centers worldwide. And you can have it from the application layer by adding Virtuoso application platform on top of uh, on top of um, uh, OVH Cloud. And it's like only two VMs. It's not we are not like the deployment of the solution needs only two VMs, and then you have the orchestrator uh, ready to go. Uh, I guess that we. And now it's a Q and A uh, session. If you have any questions, please feel free. Just put them in uh, in uh, in in the in the chat, and we will be and we will be seeing. So I have a I have a um, a, a question for you, Andreas. Uh, <laughs> do you offer different kind of clouds? Yeah, exactly. Um, I mean, different uh, customer requirements sometimes uh, require different uh, clouds we are offering. So we have in the enterprise sector three different clouds we are offering. It all starts with the service we are producing. Um, this is uh, our so-called bare metal cloud. There you can have your own dedicated server and it's basically the same server you have in your cellar sitting um, that you can manage so you can it's all under your control the next layer that we say is our hosted private cloud which i would prefer to call it hosted managed cloud um, which means we are offering the layer where it's nutanix or vmware managed 
Um, so, uh, and you have also their dedicated um, service that you can use with uh, the management layer of VMware on the Tenix on it that we manage and that we will provide for you. And the third one is the normal public cloud, as I would say it, um, which is based on OpenStack and you can use um, yeah, whatever you want and how you like it, of course, with the integration of all AI tools um, or what you want to have. So, yes. I have a second question for OVH uh, Cloud. What do you, uh, why do you offer different kind uh, of clouds? Yeah, I mean, it's like I said, there are different customer requirements and um, we enable, you know, every customer moving from on-prem, if you just want to take a first dip into the water of the cloud, that we can say, hey, you can use your own service like you have in your own cellar and start with that and go step by step to the cloud services and the public cloud. So this is what we are offering. Really. And I have a question for Virtuoso. Can I add uh, uh, software templates for um, for uh, for uh, deployment on your platform as a service? So as you as you saw, like the marketplace is coming with third, third party solutions that we can uh, that you can use, offer to use. But you have as well the possibility to create your own template. So if you have some software that you want to uh, automate where uh, the deployment and uh, scalability and all the stuff, there is a possibility to create as well your own template, add them to the marketplace of your orchestrator and then make them available to your developers to use quickly. You can do an Oracle database, you can do uh, any an IBM DB2 database, you can do uh, any, kind, any kind of software that is installable, that has a Docker image, that we can use and uh, it can be uh, dockerized and we can create the template with all the cool features that I was uh, showing. So the migration, the elasticity, the scalability, horizontal and vertical and uh, all that kind of stuff. Uh, I have another question. Uh, is your offering open source based, uh, Andreas? Yeah, as I as I I hope I mentioned. If not, I repeat. Uh, I I mentioned it or repeat it very briefly. So yes, it's uh, open stack based. So um, our public cloud offering, of course, the uh, managed cloud with VMware and Nutanix as market standard. Um, for the bare metal service, there's not, nothing on it, so it's the most open source you can get, I would say. But for the public cloud, we're totally relying on OpenStack and going with um, their what And all our development, we're bringing to the OpenStack version, and we're um, not doing any development on our own in order to not uh, yeah, do any lock-in effects, so we're really staying on the market standard. Okay. Uh, okay, good. I have one other question. Can can I create an app as multi uh, cloud one that I can, where I can have high availability? For sure. So there are two ways to do it. There is a load balances that are available when you create an application. So any application can have load balance and then you can have this multi availability of the solution. The second thing is that when you have one region that is a uh, 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 for example, let's imagine you have Europe region. And in this Europe region, you have three cloud providers. Once you create the regions, these three VMs on these three uh, cloud providers are by default, by default having the same network. So in theory, you can have database running on that cloud provider, your application server running on another cloud provider, and uh, your non-SQL uh, database running on the third uh, on the third uh, cloud provider. And then it will depend on the latency that you have between the cloud providers, but you can architecture as well the components of your application in three, the three, different, uh, three different clouds and it brings you uh, high availability. Uh, and we don't have any more questions. Uh, so uh, thank you for joining us today. Uh, I, we hope that we uh, clarified how Virtuoso and OVH Cloud are proposing to, to you and your customers uh, a, a powerful multi-cloud sovereign solution from the application layer to the infrastructure layer. Uh, if you have any questions, please uh, come to us. If you need a demo, if you need to speak to, to the both of us, uh, just send an email to info at virtuoso.com and our, our sales, uh, sales or pre-sales uh, uh, engineers would be uh, would be contacting. 
Thanks, Andreas. Thanks a lot for this, uh, for your time, for your availability, for your partnership as well. Uh, and uh, we speak soon. Yeah, thank you. I found it thrilling to see your solution live and operating. And I think, well, looking forward to the future. Super. Thanks, everyone. Goodbye. Bye.